Hi, I'm Adam. Hello, I'm Jenny. And we're going to have a podcast today on using Sigma. So we're going to start out with the ontologyportal.org page. And the first thing you do to get to Sigma is to go to the Browse link. Click on that. All right, and so here we're going to see Sigma. Uh, we've got some statistics here on how much stuff is loaded, all of Sumo, a lot of terms, a lot of axioms or the statements that are uh, defining the terms. Some of those statements are rules, and some of those terms are relations. Um, so there's a lot of controls, but we'll go through just a little bit of this today, and uh, we'll do a later podcast that has more detail some other time. So what we figured we'd do today is take one of the exercises from the chapter in my ontology book on uh, learning sigma. So the example we want to look at is uh, a verb, a slightly uncommon verb, to peep. Uh, this is on page 214 of the first edition. Uh, to peep is uh, exercise 1E of uh, chapter 6, Knowledge Engineering Tools. So really important thing here is it's very easy to cheat on this exercise if you use the English word function and search WordNet. Uh, so what we're trying to do with this exercise is get people to understand a little bit about Sigma and understand a little bit about uh, Sumo by browsing the hierarchy itself. What do you mean by searching WordNet? Uh, so WordNet is this English lexicon that I introduced uh, in my introductory lecture and hopefully some of you have, uh, who are listening to this have I've seen that. Um, so we've got two different things here that are loaded in. There's WordNet, a dictionary of English, uh, and we've got Sumo, this formal theory. And you've got two little windows here that Jenny's pointing me to, out to mention. Uh, the KB term box is where you type in Sumo terms. The English word box is where you type in words from the WordNet dictionary. Why don't we go for it as an example? Yeah, so, so we're going to use this uh, example to peep. Okay. Okay, so first thing we need to figure out, I mean, the, the tough part about getting started with Sumo and Sigma is you need to know uh, a little bit about Sumo just to even get started. So let's just give you some information to start with. So uh, peeping, or to peep, is a verb, and most verbs map to the Sumo term process. We're going to start there, process with a capital P. Why is it capital? Uh, all sumo terms that are not relations, uh, yeah, all sumo terms that are not relations have an initial capital. Now, there are some relations that are functions that are capitalized. If a functional relation has an initial capital. Relations that are not functions are initial lowercase. Everything else is an initial capital. Okay. All right, so we're going to enter a process. Uh, you're going to see you've got this drop down menu of things we've searched on recently. Uh, we're going to click enter. Okay, and now we're going to get the page for process. Wow, you have a pretty picture there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a neat project we did years ago to link uh, pictures from Wikipedia to Sumo. So there are a lot of Sumo terms that have an associated picture that's showing an example or a prototype uh, that embodies uh, this concept. So now we got the screen. What are these blue little hyperlinks words on yeah. the right hand side? The stuff on the right hand side, these are WordNet sinsets or WordNet words from WordNet, word senses that have been linked to this particular Sumo term, in this case process. I see. And then we've got a whole list of all of the formal statements, all the axioms, in which uh, the term process appears. Okay. And we start out uh, looking at appearance as argument number one. These are statements in which process, the term that we're looking at here, is appearing as the first argument. So if you have simple expressions in Sumo uh, that are not rules, you can read them kind of left to right. The first thing is the relation, or what we call argument zero. The second thing is argument one. Then we have argument two, etc. Ah, I see. So these are 
defined in sumo. Yes, all these things we're seeing that we have are, are things from sumo. So the first thing you always see um, is a documentation string. This is just a natural language comment to help you get a quick idea of what this term means. It's not actually used by the theorem provers in Sigma. It's not actually part of the formal definition. It's just like in a programming language, you put a comment at the top of your subroutines or your variables to give you a quick idea of what it means. But what it really means is in the code, not in the comments. Okay. Comments are just help. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go down this next section. We see appearances argument number two. All right. So we see here relate for the first statement that comes up. Range is the relation. Aborted fun is the first argument. The second fun, uh, second argument, argument number two is process. And so that's what you'll see for all of these in this section. Now I notice we don't have many statements on the first uh, on having process as the first argument but you see a lot of uh, lines saying you know process associated with different processes does it mean that process is quite high rank on the hierarchy yeah that's a really good good comment so process has quite a number of subclasses and so when something has subclasses it winds up being the second argument and so yeah we see a lot of this uh, here that's pretty typical and these are actually in the sumo terms right? yeah these are all sumo terms agent patient process causing happiness intentional process etc yep so if we look down a little farther we'll also see a few cases of appearances argument number three so process here is the third argument in these domain statements. Domain statements as well as also domain subclass are telling us uh, what arguments uh, or what, what are the types of arguments to a given relation or function because functions are relations. So we see for example instrument, the instrument relation which is one of these case roles uh, right. stating participants in a process the first argument to the instrument relation is of type process. Right. If we go down a little farther, oh, let's see, if you're looking on the web, in order to avoid overloading the server, I capped things at uh, 25 at a time, so getting robots hitting my server, so uh, you have to quick click through to get, uh, you know, all of, all of the uh, argument three terms here. Uh, if you're looking on the web. If you're running your own copy of Sigma locally, um, you can set this limit arbitrarily high so you don't have to bother clicking it. Yeah. That's a little handier. So let me just explain this next section too um, for antecedent and consequent. Um, so rules have two parts, uh, antecedent and consequent. And so the first argument is the antecedent and the second argument is the consequent. So here for this first rule that I'm pointing at, uh, we've got, we're looking at the, the page second x being process appearing uh, in the antecedent and so it here is here in this antecedent uh, listing. If you look down a little farther towards the next section, and there's a lot of axioms for our process in consequent, now we'll see here's this first rule has two arguments, a conjunction of stuff, and then a confers right expression. You'll see the process here appears in the consequent, not in the antecedent, and so that's why it appears down here. All right, so Jenny's reminding me I've kind of gone off in a tangent. The whole point of this was to show you uh, 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 the verb to peep, right? That was our example, so we're going to keep going through that. So now the next thing is, okay, we know peeping is a, pro is a verb, therefore a process. So the next question is, what is it of these subclasses here that are available to us? Can we walk down the hierarchy and try to find it? Right. Um, we have agent-patient process, implying you have someone being an agent, and then you have the patient, right? Yeah, but I think there's something a bit more fundamental, and that's actually down in the media ontology. Oh, I should maybe say a, a, a bit about this. Uh, on this middle column, you're getting uh, information on which source files these statements come from, because Sigma loads source files in the SUO-KIF uh, format. 
and puts it all together uh, so that you don't have to remember which file is from which knowledge base. Um, in this case, it's from media. Um, I want to keep us, let's keep, uh, for the purposes of this exercise, stick with merge. That's the original sumo, the original upper level. Okay. All right. So. We have content bearing process, due object process, intentional process, internal change, motion process, natural process, and single agent process. Yeah. So what do you think it is? amongst all of these. I think it's an intentional process. Yeah, because peeping at something certainly sounds intentional to me. Alright, so let's click on intentional process. Okay. So, intentional process. We have also, again, all sorts of... Well, we have listening. Continue. We have listening, yeah. So if listening is kind of... Uh, is uh, something we do with our ears, maybe we can find something to do with our eyes. There, we have looking. Okay, yeah, looking sounds like peeping to me. Alright, hey, we even got a picture of somebody's eyes. <laughs> looking, okay, an instance of seeing which is intentional. Okay, uh, that sounds pretty good to me. Looking is a kind of seeing that is intentional. Uh, but then, with peep, you have some furtive sense that you do it quietly. Yeah, so as is the case for a lot of sumo, right. we don't have super specific stuff. If you wanted to actually define to peep, we'd have maybe some subclass that we'd create below looking. Right. And then we'd say, oh, the person who's peeping is doing this quickly compared to other kinds of looking and maybe doesn't want to be discovered. It's, it's a secret. There's something nobody, he wants to make sure that nobody else sees him peeping. <laughs> right. But it's not defined yet. But it's not defined yet. Right? So it could be one of our audience tasks to define that in sumo terms. Yeah. In fact, that would be a great exercise. Okay. All right, so, so that was just a quick introduction. Um, why don't we wrap it up for now? Um, hopefully this has given you a little bit of introduction to Sigma that you can use yourself. And you know, the best way to learn about Sumo and Sigma is to start exploring and doing the exercises. Okay. So thanks, Jenny, for your help. Thank uh, you, Adam.